Hello, friends. This is Dave Hurwitz, executive editor at ClassicsToday.com. And here we're talking about Dave's faves. Yay, Dave's faves. Number, I don't know, 160-something. I'll figure it out when I have to post this sucker. Today, I want to talk to you about the Brahms Double Concerto and my favorite recording, which is this one, which is fairly recent, with Gil Shaham, John Wang, and the Berlin Philharmoniker under Claudio Abbado, the Berliner Philharmoniker, the Berlin Philharmonic, whatever. You can mix them and match them. The Philharmonique de Berlin. Say it however you want. Yeah, boy, this is great. And it comes with an absolutely spectacular Brahms Violin Concerto with Gil Shaham alone, which I talked about in my Brahms Violin Concerto repertoire video. Now, a lot of you have asked me to do a repertoire video on the Brahms Double Concerto, as I would like to, but I have to say, it's another one of those pieces that is problematic for repertoire videos because there are just a lot of really, really good performances. On the one. I mean, they really are. I mean, people tend not to do it unless they know how to do it and unless they want to do it and do it really well. And the piece is it's written in such a way. I mean, Brahms was such a clever guy, let's face it, that, that you know, it's, it's not about, you know, one person being in charge so much. It's really a collaborative effort. Now, Abado is a fabulous, fabulous Brahms conductor. It's really the best stuff he did. And and after like Verdi stuff, you know. And Gil Shaham is great in the Brahms concerto. He's a fabulous violinist. And John Wang is a magnificent cellist. And they all just get along so well. And that's so important in this piece because, you know, like I said, it's not really a virtuoso vehicle. I have to confess, I didn't like this piece for the longest amount of time. In fact, it wasn't popular when Brahms wrote it. A lot of critics were fairly adverse in discussing it. They said it was a rather cold and inexpressive piece, and it can come across that way. It really can. You know, Hanslick, the great Brahmsian supporter in Vienna, you know, who wrote The Beautiful in Music, and he was the anti-Wagnerian. Henslick was an interesting guy when it came to Brahms and this kind of music. I'm not, I don't have, you know, I don't remember what he thought about this particular work, but Henslick always praised Brahms against Wagner, but Henslick did not really like Brahms that much. And Brahms knew it, but Brahms knew that he needed good publicity and Henslick was available. So Brahms used Henslick for what he could get out of him. Henslick was actually an a bel canto opera guy that was his that was his 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 fach his love and he chose brahms because brahms was the anti wagner but he never really understood it either and i can kind of understand it i understand it with respect to the double concerto it it comes across as a rather forbidding work it's extremely compressed it's an incredibly compressed piece, even though it opens with you know cadenzas for the violin and the cello and all that. After that, it's really tightly written. I mean, how long is the whole thing? 34 minutes in this particular case. And think about it. Think about how expansive the two piano concertos are, or even the violin concerto. I mean, the first movement of the violin concerto is 25 minutes in many, many performances. And here it's 17. And you've got two soloists. So that means everything's got to get said multiple times. So that means that the themes tend to be short and very compressed. I mean, think of the opening. Da, 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 ba, da, 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 Ten seconds. I mean, the only time where you get an unbelievably catchy tune, I think, is the finale, of course. Da 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 pa 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 da da. That's a great tune in Brahms's Hungarian vein, like the finales of most of his concertos and string things and whatnot. It's fantastic. But that said. With all of these sort of iffy things that I, I want to throw out there, because again, this is another work where, you know, people are afraid to say they don't like it because it's Brahms. Don't be afraid. I disliked it for years, <laughs> decades even. And then finally it hit me. And really, this was one of the performances that hit me. There were others. There was, you know, 
there's always Zell, you know, and those people. Um, but yeah, it's a tough piece. And so, and so if it takes a little time to grow on you, don't feel bad about it. Just let it happen. This performance may be the one to do it. It is so beautifully integrated. Everyone plays gorgeously, first of all. And second of all, it, it has incredible mobility and interplay between the soloists and the orchestra. I mean, everybody's just on the same page, which is what has to happen in this piece. And like I said, there are many performances where that's true. So I'm not going to say, oh, this is the best and everything else is second rate, like so many of you do in your less intelligent comments, folks. I'm not naming names, but I've been deleting quite a few comments lately that say, oh, so-and-so is the best and leaves everyone else in the dust and everyone else is pathetic. And no, 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 no. Don't say that. I'm just going to delete your comment. We don't need that kind of silliness. What we need is, I love this performance and here's why. That's what we need. It's called, it's called a discussion. You know, so I'm not going to say this is the greatest ever. It's just the one I love the most. And it's on Don't You Gramophone and it's still around and it's absolutely glorious. And the Brahms concerto that comes with it is glorious. So what could be wrong? And it's a much better coupling than the Beethoven triple concerto that often comes with this, frankly. So I'm very happy to have this particular version in my, like this, so I can pull it out when I want to hear it. So keep on listening, friends. Thank you so much for joining me. Take care.